All right, so these are the lessons for scientific notation. First example here, without using a calculator, find the value of 2.4 times 10 to the power of 5 times 5 times 10 to the power of negative C, negative 17. Give your answer in the form, blah, 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 which is just the formal way of asking for your answer in scientific notation. So if we look at this, really we can think of it as 2.4 times 5 times 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the negative 17, since everything here is multiplication and you can multiply in any order you want. So I'm going to focus on the 2.4 times 5 part first, and then separately 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of negative 17. Now, it says to use this without a calculator. Honestly, you could, but the point is we don't really need one. Um, so 2.4 times 5, I think what 24 times 5 is, 24 times 5 is 120. 2.4 times 5 will be then 12. So I'll just think of this as 12. And then over here, I can use my exponent law as I'm multiplying two powers to the same base. When I do that, I can just add the exponents. So this will be the same as 10 to the power of whatever 5 minus 17 is, which is negative 12. Now, this is not yet done. This is not in scientific notation because the part that's highlighted in yellow, the 12, is not between 1 and 10. And if we look right here, we can see that first value always needs to be between 1 and 10. It can be as low as 1. It can't be quite as big as 10. And so I can take care of this quite easily if I just divide this by 10. And I could do that as long as I balance it out by multiplying this factor here by 10. And so I can now think of having this instead of 12 times 10 to the negative 12, I can have 1.2 times 10 to the power of. Now, 10 to the power of negative 12 times 10, especially if you think of this as 10 to the power of 1. Again, you can use your exponent laws. I'm multiplying two powers to the same base. And so negative 12 plus 1 is negative 11. And there's nothing wrong at all about confirming that this is correct on a calculator. And you'll be allowed a calculator throughout the entire course. But it's good to kind of understand what's happening here and other approaches. Similar idea here. Without a calculator, I want to find the value of this expression in scientific notation. This time, though, notice we're adding two expressions in scientific notation, and we don't have the same power of 10 here. And if we look back at what we've reviewed, when you're adding or subtracting, if you, what we can do is we can essentially put these together if we have the same power of 10 over here, and we don't. So what I want to do first is find a way to make these have the same power of 10. And essentially, I need to either make this a power of 7 or make this a power of 6. Doesn't really matter which way I'm gonna, which way I do it at first. Um, I will make them both a power of seven, which means I'm not going to change this second expression, but I will change this 10 to the power of six, and I can make it 10 to the power of seven if I just multiply by 10 or 10 to the power of one, which again I can do as long as I balance it out by dividing this by 10 to the power of one, or just divide by 10. And so now this expression is now going to look like instead of 2.2 times 10 to the power of 6, if I divide by 10, it will now look to be 0 0.22 times 10 to the power of 7, and the other expression I left alone. And now we have the same power of 10, and so now I can focus on this, and I can add these together. When you're adding two values in scientific notation, as long as, or subtracting two values in scientific notation, as long as they have the same power of 10, you can just add or subtract, depending on the question, the coefficients in the front. And so 0 0.22 plus 5 is clearly 5.22 times 10 to the power of 7. Lastly, I want to find the volume of a cube whose edge, edges all measure 4.85 times 10 to the power of 3. Again, give your answer in scientific notation. It doesn't make any comment about not using a calculator here, so I will use a calculator. First thing I want to do is make a visual of what's happening here. i got a cube, lovely simple shape, and all these edges are 4.85 times 10 to the power of 3 centimeters. So volume of a simple shape like this is length times width times height. In this case, it's 4.85 times 10 to the power of 3 times itself 3 times. And so the volume 
will equal 4.85 times 10 to the power of 3, all to the power of 3. And at this point, I have a few options, but one is to realize when I have multiple factors all raised to a power, I can raise each of these individually to that power. So I can think of this as 4.85 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 9. Now, I definitely want to use a calculator for this. So 4.85 times 10 to the power of 3. I'll round it to about five decimals. Oh, sorry, uh, five digits, so th two decimals. I get 114.08 approximately. So I'm going to put my squiggly equal sign. There we go. The double tilde is the fancy name for it, times 10 to the power of 9. And now again, this is not in scientific notation because I have too many digits in that first coefficient. And the convention is it has to be between 1 and 10. And so I need to divide this by 100 or move the decimal two spots there to make that work, which again, I can do as long as I multiply this by 100, or same as multiplying by 10 to the power of 2, which is helpful for using our exponent loss. And so I can see my final answer is approximately 1.14, and I'll just round it like that, times 10 to the power of 11. Now, as later on in the course, when we learn about things called significant figures, there's general rules in IB about how many digits you should round to or how many significant figures we should show. I'll talk about that later. So in the meantime, just realize this is an approximation 